Hi, I'm Georgia Schaefer, and with me in this recording are the community builders, our leaders of Rebuild After Divorce. And this is a safe community where we equip Christian women who are separated and divorced with the tools, the strategies, and a community to move forward. So we're also thrilled to have with us Joy Forrest, the founder of Called to Peace, and she's going to tell us uh, about the retreat that's coming up, because that's especially what we want to talk about. May 2nd to the 5th, the Call to Peace retreat in Juneau, Lake June, Alaska in North Carolina. And we want to share the rebuilders that are here, the difference it's made in our lives, the healing and the growth. And so, Betty, would you start? Sure. I've been to a lot of call to peace retreats and the one that the one factor that stands out the most to me that's helped um, as far as my healing from very, very raw to kind of reaching back and helping others more has been emotional and spiritual safety. Um, there, there's always prayer team and people that you can grab to talk to who'll pray with you. But there's also a large number of counselors and people helpers who eat meals with us, who walk and talk and hang out. And I think the freedom of that, I mean, there's also the availability for scheduling appointments, but just knowing that emotionally safe people who understand are available and especially the prayer team and the people helpers to always know that there's a safe place to turn. Yeah. And that is so important. Yeah. So important that safety. Mm -hmm. And I think we are a little less organized now. We don't schedule the appointments, but you can grab one of them <laughs> and uh, pull them aside. And, and there are plenty who will, are willing to talk to you and, and work through things. So yeah. Yeah, that one-on-one, -on -one, so important too. Mm -hmm. Lori? Um, yeah, I went to, uh, I've, well, I've been a part of Rebuild for about three years now. And I went to my first called the Peace Retreat two years ago. And at that retreat, I really felt validated. After years and years of feeling crazy, <laughs> because I... I, there was a disconnect between what how I saw myself and how um, my ex saw me. And I didn't even realize that it was abuse. I didn't, that word wasn't part of my vocabulary back then. So when I went to call the peace, I felt very validated and was able to identify what was happening in my marriage. And I also felt very, very safe there. And then the, um, the breakout sessions and some of the sessions that I went to all so biblically based and my eyes were opened to what the Bible really has to say about how God hates oppressors, hates abuse. He fights for those who are downtrodden, who are brokenhearted, who are, and it just, um, it was a huge leap forward in my own healing, just being able to be a part of that group. Um, the worship was powerful and healing, and I'd been a part of Rebuild for over a year already, and then to be able to meet many of my Rebuild sisters in person was really powerful as well. So, um, and then the second year that I went, it was just, I, I couldn't wait to go back, and it was more of what I had experienced the first time, and I was in a better place, and and really starting to think then too, how can I give back? How can I help other people along the journey? So it was very, very powerful for me. Oh, that's great. Thank you, Lori. Carla? Hi, I'm Carla and I've attended Call to Peace twice. Um, attending the retreat gave me hope after um, enduring a tumultuous divorce. Uh, I didn't realize like uh, a lot of them that it was abuse because it wasn't physical. But just in meeting with the ladies and prayer, the first time I went, I just was so broken. I don't remember much of it besides a lot of crying. <laughs> so a lot of healing. But the second one, that retreat, I just felt renewed, lighter. Uh, mm -hmm. And just getting to see the other rebuilders there. And 
I don't have family here in Georgia. So just being around them and being around other people that know the struggle that have been there, they can say, I, I understand. Uh, like Lori said, felt validated. I just, it meant everything. So. Yeah. yeah. Great. Meg? Uh, yes. Uh, I went four years ago when Leslie Vernick was the speaker, had just finished reading her book, Emotionally Destructive Marriages, and realized, oh my gosh, <laughs> that was me. And um, But didn't realize that I was part of a very much larger community. And when I went that first time, and I'll tell you, Joe, I walked into that, that room the first time where it was everybody's there, and I looked around, and all I could do, first of all, be between the sobs, is, dear Lord, for every woman sitting in this chair, there's a man put her here. What in the world? So that was my beginning to see that we are not alone and isolated like we were made to feel. And this community not only helped us to feel connected, but there was enough time during the retreat to go deep inside ourselves. And in that, and like everyone else is saying, it was a safe community to be very vulnerable. And I saw women in all stages of where they were in their lives. And yet we all felt connected. And so I've gone every year since, and each year as I get stronger, I start seeing the impact that this ministry is having on so many women and the fact that your speakers, I mean, that's where I met Georgia. I was working the bookstore and kept seeing her going back and forth. And she's got something I think I want. And she did. She was the next step I needed in my healing journey. So as I, I, I tell people about this retreat, I said, this is not a lot. This is not just come look at the beautiful surroundings, which it is beautiful and not just to meet new friends, which you do, but you get closer to the Lord in a time of hurt and brokenness that you don't think he could get any closer. And he does because you're there, you share, we share, we learn. And it's just, it's life-changing. It has truly changed my life. And I know it has changed others who have gone also. Yes. And for me, when I arrived, I don't know what I was expecting, but not only a lot of women, but they were, it was an uplifting, um, just spirit to it, you know, emotional growth, spiritual growth. And so it wasn't this heavy because a lot of people there have dealt with heavy, heavy mm -hmm. stuff, but that wasn't the spirit. We all knew uh, the kind of circumstances many have been through. So that was really special. And this year I get to do a workshop on building and nurturing healthy relationships. And we know those life-giving relationships are essential to our well-being. And those that are life-draining, we got to make sure we clarify. And how do we distance ourselves? But if I'm honest, what, one of the things I'm really looking forward to is the location at Lake June, Alaska. Uh, the conference center is right on the lake. There's a two or three mile walking trail. And every morning I was there, I walked around the lake and it's nestled in the Smoky Mountains, just a glorious part of God's creation. So there's two of the rebuilders that have also been uh, at that particular conference with Call to Peace. So Betty, do you wanna share your experience at that location? Do. there's something wonderful about water mm -hmm. and having access to water and so walking around the lake you're right at the edge of the lake so you experience that and there's also benches all along the way and the flowers are beautiful it's landscaped beautifully but the piece that I remember is um, I think it was Saturday afternoon we had some free time and then there was a um, boat ride that some people took and when they took the boat ride they let lanterns down and the lanterns floated lit across the water my friend and I took our kayaks and um, just before the boat went out we went out on the lake in the kayaks and so as those lanterns floated across we were in the middle of them they floated right on past us and we got to sit and just enjoy the sunset on the water in the kayaks and it was amazing but just the peacefulness, the settledness, the availability of places to go off by yourself if you need to, mm -hmm. but also plenty of spaces for people to connect and hang out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Meg? Uh, yeah, I'm, 
I'm going to just coattail on what Betty said. It's just the beauty of the water and the uh, area. It, it is gorgeous. And I'll say the first year when I was there, I didn't do a lot of that because I was spending most of my time in my room just absorbing everything I was learning. So this this year, I'm definitely going to take advantage of all that. But we rented, about eight of us have rented a, a house right on the opposite side of the lake from the conference center. Two of them are, I'm bringing that have never been to the re um, retreat before. And I just know that's going to be an additional time of bonding, even after everything else is said and done. And I look really look forward to that. And to be able to look out, our house is right on the lake too, to be able to sit there with a cup of coffee and look out and just have that time with God and nature. It just, it, it's, you don't get that anywhere else. Yeah. Yeah. It's a glorious place. It really is. Well, by no means do I want to communicate that called to peace is just for separated and divorced women, mm -hmm. because that's not true. So Joy, we have with us, she's the founder of called to peace. Joy, can you share with us who this retreat is for? Well, called to peace ministries is actually a, a ministry. It's I say we started, at least the intention was for people who had been through domestic abuse. So that would include emotional abuse and um, just what Leslie Vernick calls emotionally destructive relationships. Um, but what we found as we are helping these women, and we've had like just thousands of women come through some portion of our ministry at this point, we are finding that there's an overlap for some of them with, you know, different sexual abuse or um, childhood sexual abuse, but just trauma in general. Um, and so this year we actually are adding some, a, two, a, a track for childhood sexual abuse survivors. So there will be um, that going on in addition to ones that are just for um, domestic abuse, but we also will just have these general sessions. And I, I say that, um, the, the sessions that you're going to be hearing are going to be for anybody who's been through trauma. Like to me, divorce is traumatic. I've been through a divorce. So, um, it's a traumatic thing that we go through. And so it kind of trauma takes something from us and God is a restorer. And so the goal for, our retreats is to, that we would be restored. Um, and so um, the, the name of it, we've come up with a name just for the retreat. The retreat itself is he makes all things new. So he's the one that redeems our pain and he, he restores our, uh, basically he's a redeemer of the entire um, purpose. Like our life always has a purpose. Even when we are going through terrible things, painful things. He's got a redemptive purpose in mind. And so we really want to be looking at that. We really are not there to um, waste time. We, we, we want it. We want to make the most of our time when we're there. And we really are trying to point people to that redemption, to the fact that our God is a healer and we bring in people that can speak to that. And so every year we come up with a theme or I come up with a, a theme and the year that the, um, it usually comes to me about a year or a year and a half before the retreat. And so the theme this year is beloved because for me, knowing God's love was so healing. I think that I, well, I will, I know that for most of us who live through any kind of trauma like that, we start doubting God's goodness. Mm -hmm. um, trauma takes away um, that our view of God gets a little bit distorted and warped. And it also takes away our identity, knowing who we are in him. And so knowing that we are beloved by him, that, that he loves us with this everlasting love and that it's enough. You know, I remember coming out of that marriage my uh, and thinking, you know, I felt like I had no hope and no future and nothing, you know, because my marriage was my identity. And so to have the the Holy one of Israel who said that he is my, that my maker is my husband. And so he truly lived up to that for me and knowing that love. And, and it's, he always in scripture, God describes himself in a multitude of ways as, as a father, as a brother, as a, you know, as, a, as a savior, but even, you know, there's so many ways as a husband, he talks about as a husband, but he doesn't stop at any of those because they, all those late relationships can be broken for us. So it's good. I think there's choose one, <laughs> choose one of those. It's an intimate relationship that the Lord has described. Um, for me, it was when he described himself as a nursing mother, 
with the babe at her breast, could she forsake her children? Well, maybe she could, but he could never forsake us. And to really know th this intimate love that God, the creator of the universe, wants this intimate relationship with us. And so I see the healing power of knowing that relationship, knowing that love. And so this is what the focus is going to be on this year. Because, I mean, you can ask yourself, has suffering really um, damage my view of God? Do I really think that he's a little bit unfair now because he's allowed me to go through all of this? Or do I see him as with loving, redemptive purposes? And so as we are able to like press in and to know his love in suffering is like the most beautiful thing. I look back even now, I got out of abuse in 19, I, I left for good in 1996. And I still look back on that time it was the hardest time in my life. And I look back on it and it was like, he was just holding me and he was so real to me and he became so real to me. And so being able to hold on to the fact that he was there, that he was holding on to me, um, it just, it changed me in, in a beautiful way. And I mean, some of you have read my book where I talk about this experience I had in a dumpster where Jesus was there. My husband had thrown away everything I owned all my personal belongings and being in this dumpster, just crying out to him, Lord, nobody knows what I'm going through. Nobody understands. And the Lord reminded me that he knew, like he knew that amount of suffering. And I realized I, I would have never chosen that, but he chose it. So having this reminder of his love, even in the in fact that we have a God who doesn't just sit up in heaven and watch us suffer. He entered into the suffering and he entered his, into our suffering so that's the purpose is just to help people kind of reconnect with his good, this good, good, loving God. Um, and even I have a breakout that I'm going to do called disappointment with God. I haven't been doing breakout sessions at the retreat, but I'm going to do it this year because I feel like, you know, where is God in our suffering? And it's, it's the question of the age is right. I don't have the all the answers, but I do know um, that he is, he was my only hope. And if I hadn't chosen to trust in him, I would have been sunk really, you know, what, uh, whether, what other hope do we have, right? Suffering is going to happen whether we have God or not, but it's a whole lot better when we have him. So yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the retreat is May 2nd to the 5th, again, Lake June, Alaska, North Carolina, the website for all the details and to register is called to peace.org forward slash event. And mm -hmm. then is there another forward slash? Huh. Hold on. I actually pulled it up before I got on here and then I lost it real quick. But I, yeah, I think it's, um, hold on, let's see if I can find Survivor. it. Called Survivor the... Retreat. Um, hold on, here it is. Go. Okay, you let's go. see. You go, go to calledtopeace.org and there is a button on the very first screen that comes up. For well, the it says sign up for the okay. retreat. Yeah, that's actually, it says to donate to the scholarship fund, but it'll also take you over there. But you, you can also go under the home button and it says events or it might be under the about. Is that under about? Under about, it says events and then you can click on 2024 women's retreat. And so the address is going to come up eventually. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, it, it is called to peace.org. And then it is, oh, it's a lot of backslash. Uh, back backslashes forward slashes mm -hmm. yeah forward mm -hmm. slashes okay so then it's events and then forward slash survivor dash healing dash retreat slash so it's a lot but you'll find it if you just go over to call to peace.org and then uh, you can go either through that button that betty's talking about or um on the uh, about section and go to events we're in the middle yeah. of working on our website because i don't really think that's where it belongs <laughs> so we'll get it but Find the events button. Yes. Yeah. And we want you to come. And if you attend, be sure you come and say hello to us because <laughs> we'd yeah. love to connect with you one on one and just be part of the group that's committed to growth and healing with our Lord. Mm -hmm. So thank you, Joy, for taking your time to share about this very important Called to well, you're welcome. Okay. Do you want to hear about any of the other speakers or what else is going on there? Very sure. Great. Okay. Um, we do have some other speakers. I, some of you may know um, Nagme Panahi, who her husband was um, Pastor Saeed, who was in the Ir Iranian prison way back in 2012. 
Um, mm-hmm. And Franklin Graham was trying to get him out. He eventually did get out, but she ended up meeting with President Obama and President Trump at one point. Um, she was really advocating for his release, but it turns out he was being, he was very abusive. And so um, she's actually a kind of a last minute addition. I ended up meeting her and she's going to be speaking. Um, we have, for those who may know them, um, Chris Moles, who has written a book called The Heart of Domestic Abuse. Um, we have Darby Strickland, who wrote a book called Is It Abuse? And um, let's see, we have uh, Renee Best, who is actually a therapist here in the Raleigh area, who's going to be talking about shame. And uh, then we have, um, come on, I know it, Elise Fitzpatrick, who is going to be um, speaking on, and she's just written a book called Beloved. It's just not going to be out in time for the retreat. So anyway, she, I love the way that Elise really takes scripture and makes it real and, and will apply it to our, our lives in a way that nobody has done before. And it's beautiful. Mm-hmm. And we have Rebecca Davis coming again, Rebecca Davis and Georgia Schaefer and Beth Broom and Tabitha Westbrook that you guys are like staples at our retreat. We're not, we're mm-hmm. going to invite you every year. <laughs> So it's hard to know who to invite. You know, we feel like we have to do someone different, but we have a, a whole host of other um, wonderful um, speakers and yes, counselors, but we're also going to do very practical hands-on workshops this time around, which will include some art things, but um, you know, you, you name it, we've got so many um, practical things and you don't have to come to all of those, but you have the option of uh, during your free time going to a place called art space. I think it's just, um, there just are a lot of options and it's near Asheville. So Lake Junaluska is really like 20 minutes West of Asheville, North Carolina, which is where the Biltmore house is. And so you're going to, it is just an amazing, beautiful location. We, we went back there just cause I missed the water. Like you said, Betty, <laughs> um, the uh, other place we have been going the last two years was great. The facilities I think are better, but I, we all just missed that lake. <laughs> so yeah. we're going back and uh, we would love for you to come and join us. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Definitely. So again, May 2nd to the 5th, go to call to peace.org forward slash about, and then choose events. And uh, you can find out about the survivor dash healing dash retreat. Yes. So thank you. Thank you for everybody taking the time to share about this very important event.